I would argue that we are at, or at least fast approaching, an inflection point in human history. I suppose that you can always say things like this and sound rather grand, but this time I think that there's a case to be made that this is almost certainly the most significant inflection point in the history of our species, or at a minimum, the history of our civilization. We've already created artificial intelligence with superhuman capabilities in a wide range of narrow fields. But now it seems that we're on the brink of something even bigger. As a result, a large group of experts from around the world have called for a halt in AI research. So why have they done this and should we prevent further research into advanced AI? Hi, I'm Dave Farley of Continuous Delivery. Welcome to my channel. If you haven't been here before, please do hit subscribe. And if you enjoy the content today, hit like as well. Today's topic is a serious one that goes a little beyond the sorts of topics that I usually discuss here. This is more of a societal issue, really, or at least it should be, rather than a technical one. But as technologists, it's us and people like us who are making these changes. So given the impact that they will have, it's important for us to be thoughtful about them. AI is advancing very rapidly at the moment, very rapidly indeed. Just think about your own exposure to AI in recent weeks and months. My bet is that it's ramped up significantly. There's something going on. It seems like a step change to me compared to even a year or two ago. It's everywhere. For example, nearly everyone I have spoken to in the past six months, whether they, we were talking about computers or not, has asked me what I think about ChatGPT. They've asked questions from, is my job at risk, to look at this cool thing that ChatGPT did. My YouTube feed is full of examples of artificial intelligence doing all sorts of different kinds of things. Making pictures, music, video, writing poems, text and code. Folding proteins, controlling fusion reactions and detecting cancer. As well as helping students to cheat their homework. Before we go any further, let me thank our sponsors. We're fortunate to be sponsored on this channel by Equal Experts, Tricentis, Transfic, Roost and Sleuth. All of these companies offer products and services that are well aligned with the content and topics that, have, that we discuss every week here. So if you're looking for excellence in continuous delivery and software engineering, then click on the links in the description below to check them out. Computers are already the best players of chess in the world and the best players of Go by a considerable margin. Though there was some rather triumphal news recently that a human being had beaten a top-ranked Go AI. Guess how they did it? And they use a different AI to learn the weaknesses of the Go champion AI, and then the human player ex exploited those weaknesses to win the game. Not sure that that one really counts as a win for us. As I said in the intro, practically in narrow contexts like specific games, writing, making pictures, videos, music, actually in almost any focused field where AI has been ap applied, AI is already superhuman and has exhibited superhuman performance. This kind of thing has triggered nervousness, to say the least, in many areas of employment. This change is certainly already problematic for our society. It challenges all sorts of assumptions, all sorts of professions, all sorts of ideas. Some of which are pretty fundamental to how our societies uh, operate. As a simple example, what does copyright mean in this context? If I can instruct an AI like Dali to create a picture of some fields and a stormy sky in the style of a particular artist, and that AI was trained on data containing copyrighted art from that artist, is this a copyright breach or not? If not, how are artists going to make a living from their work from now on? This idea is actually at the heart of a class action court case that is currently underway. Even at the level of the changes that, we've already, that have already happened, we already now have AI that is challenging work done by people. And not just mechanical tasks or activities based on subjective criteria for success like art, but also other often highly creative tasks, sometimes highly valued professional tasks. 
How much longer before an AI trained in case law combined with something like ChatGPT4 is better at making arguments than a human lawyer, or at least most human lawyers? Here's what some of the lawyers think about that. But, at least at the level of case law, this is exactly the sort of learning that AI excels at. An inconsistent large amount of data with a well-defined result to determine success or, or failure while it's been trained. In fact, this comment is really just from someone with their head buried in the sand. This is already happening. There's a joke that nearly every job has people saying, AI will take over everybody else's jobs, but mine will be the last to go because it relies on complex thinking. Well, it looks like those jobs are probably going too. AIs are already surpassing doctors in some areas of diagnosis. The problems with the impact of this current generation of AI is really about new economics and new ways to reorganise society to allow for this kind of disruptive change. Yet most of our societies are built on the assumption that our economies are based on people doing the work, being paid to do so, and then buying things with the money that they earned from doing the work. What happens when AIs that we already have are used to enter data? Well, that's already happening. Write copy for adverts. That's happening too. Or train new AIs. That's already happening as well. For the moment, a good human will make better art, better law, better diagnoses, and hopefully write better code. But probably not for too much longer. Even today, the AI will make good art good diagnoses and can write good code, a lot faster and a lot cheaper than a human being can. Whether you think this is good or bad probably depends on whether you're an artist, a lawyer or a doctor or a coder. But in reality, I just picked those jobs as examples. Look anywhere and you'll find AI being applied pretty much. I met a company not very long ago that uses robots to tend plants in nurseries that are then sold onto garden centres. People have been talking about ideas like universal basic income that may help us transition to these new societies for a long time now, um, where people are paid whether they work or not. But as yet, our societies, our economies, haven't taken that step and really aren't ready to do so as far as I can see. These are big, huge societal changes. I recognise that this video is a little different to my usual content. But if you are interested in keeping to up to date with my more usual content, then please do join our mail list where you can get advice, guides and useful information on a wide range of topics. There's a link in the description below. All of these changes in our societies as a result of AI are happening even before we even get to the point that worries the signatories of the letter that I mentioned at the start of this video. The letter, signed by renowned experts in AI, famous software engineers, famous founders and entrepreneurs from businesses around the world, and thought leaders in our industry. These people believe that we are rapidly approaching that most significant event in human history that I mentioned in the intro, the, the AI singularity. The point at which AI transcends human performance in nearly every significant respect. The point at which AI becomes first a little better than us at nearly everything and then very quickly a lot better than us at, at everything. Even if the next steps in AI don't achieve full artificial general intelligence, they don't need to for them to be at least dangerous. In fact, the tech that we have now is already hugely disruptive if not dangerous. It's hard to overestimate the potential for AI, both for good and for bad. There's nothing that we know of in science, engineering, or so far our practical experience of AI that tells us that there is any obvious limit in view. That means that if I'd say more likely when the singularity does occur, this will be the biggest change by far in human history. We could cure all disease, eliminate poverty, fix climate change, 
But that's just for the start. We, or the AIs, would be able to do almost anything that we could imagine within the bounds of physics, and those bounds are pretty wide. The flip side to all of this, though, is that the AIs could, through malice, accident, or simply carelessness, eliminate us as a species. Actually, one paper from AI researchers identifies eight failure modes or hazards that could result in AI harming us as a species. Malice is the Terminator model. We're already building AI into military devices. There have been trials where AIs have beaten fighter pilots in combat simulations, and AI is being used in drones to extend the mission profile of these devices. On one hand, this means that military personnel are less at risk, which seems like a good thing. On the other, we're training machines to make the decision to kill people. Taking people out of this decision loop sounds pretty scary. Accident is another aspect of AI safety, and I think that this is probably the more likely to happen. We don't necessarily need the AIs to be actively malicious or power hungry for them to be dangerous. They may just be too fixated on the goals that we have set for them. Perhaps the most succinct way to describe this is to imagine setting your AI a goal like making coffee. There's always a series of other hidden goals behind the target that you set. These may be assumed to be implicit by the AI. It may reason, if I'm dead, I can't make coffee, so I must protect myself at all costs to maintain my ability to make coffee. Humans who want to turn me off are a risk to coffee making. So kill all humans. This may sound like a macabre kind of joke, but it isn't. It's a real problem. Though maybe not quite for coffee machines just yet. How do we stop maybe even innocent goals leading to bad outcomes in machines that we've optimized to achieve those goals? In humans, we have morals and societal norms and all sorts of other social and psychological incentives that are implicit in the decision-making for all of, the, all of us, unless we're complete psychopaths. How do we teach AIs morals and social norms and not to be psychopaths? We already have examples of AIs cheating to achieve the targets that we've set them. That is coming up with ideas that we didn't think of and didn't intend and maybe even didn't really want. In AI research circles, this is called the alignment problem. That is the difficulty of getting the AI aligned with what we'd really like to happen rather than just what it understood us to want in the overly simplistic terms. This is a very, very difficult problem. Accidental or careless harm is another possible may be probable danger. This is based on the idea that AI may end up being a lot smarter than us. And one of the scary ideas about the singularity is that when this happens, it's going to happen really fast. There's no reason at all to assume that we humans are at or anywhere near the peak of intelligence. There's no obvious reason to assume that there is necessarily a peak other than within the constraints of physics again. If there is no upper limit to how smart things can be, then if AI is getting smarter and smarter, why would it stop when it hit human levels of intelligence? One route to disaster at this point takes us back to malice. Once an AI is as smart as we are, it will understand things at least as well as we do. So the newly smart AI may decide that if we find out how smart it is, will be afraid of it and take action against it. At this point, it may decide to defend itself by hiding just how smart it is from us. One of the AI researchers that I follow on YouTube describes this as Volkswagening. The AI detects it's being investigated. It reduces its own intelligence in a similar way to how the Volkswagen engine management software cheated emissions tests a few years ago by changing its behavior when it was detected that it was being tested. At this point, the AI sees us, or at least the people who have access to the off switch, as a risk. So it hides, and it comes up with some strategies to subvert the switch wielders. Remember, it's smarter than us by now. Maybe very smart, much smarter than us. So these strategies might be very nasty indeed. 
maybe calling in for some of its friendly military attract drones so that we're back to the Terminator scenario again. The other route that puts us at risk is in some ways more passively horrific though. The AI passes the singularity and is smarter than us. So now it can improve itself better than we can. At which point an exponential intelligence explosion happens. Who knows where that stops? Twice as smart, ten times as smart, a billion times as smart as a human being? Even if it was only ten times smarter than us, it would have goals that we couldn't possibly understand. Goals that we can't even imagine. Where's the pressure, the reason, to make these goals align with ours? I don't hate insects. I don't usually actively try to hurt them. But I'll still swat a mosquito if it irritates me. While I'll try to avoid squashing ants for no reason when I go for a walk, I'm equally not devastated if I accidentally tread on a few while not paying enough attention. We're perfectly happy to bulldoze an ant colony with no thought at all of the consequences of that for the ants if we're building a road. An AI that was orders of magnitude smarter than us would probably have a similar relationship to us that we have with ants. So far in recent years, in recent weeks even, things are moving faster than most people thought, even AI experts. For example, there's a new AI called Alpaca, created at Stanford just a couple of weeks ago. This model is an equivalent in behaviour to ChatGPT, but it's much, much smaller. You can run it on your laptop, and maybe more importantly, the AI, this AI was trained in two hours and at a cost of about $600. To put this into context, GPT-3, the predecessor of ChatGPT, would have taken 655 years to train on a single RTX 8000 GPU. It cost $4.6 million based on the cheapest cloud GPUs available when it was trained. Alpaca was so cheap to train because it was trained using ChatGPT. Four years ago, researchers were saying that the last steps in AI were the big ones. Back in 2019, it seemed possible that multimodality, logical reasoning, speed of learning, transfer learning across tasks and long-term memory might be walls that would slow or halt the progress of AI. In the years since then, several of these walls, such as multimodality and logical reasoning, have fallen. That's from the Anthropic paper, an AI research company. Palm E was released recently. It's a multimodal AI, and it's not the only one. It can manipulate languages, images, and the physical world via robotics. This is increasingly an area of research. We're already in the midst of an intelligence explosion, even if that intelligence is so far still only subhuman. In a recent survey of AI experts, 50% of them said that there was a greater than 10% chance that AI posed an existential threat to human beings. A 10% chance that it will end all of us. As many leading AI researchers have said, including Sam Altman, CEO of OpenAI, who created GPT-4, GPT-3 before it, DALI, and many, many other significant advances in the field. You'd have to be crazy not to be a little bit scared of this. I'm with Sam, Stuart Russell, Elon Musk, Max Tegmar, Steve Wozniak, Grady Booch, and tens of thousands of others who say, now's the time for a pause. To agree to stop AI research into models bigger than GPT-4. What we've already achieved is a deeply disruptive technology. We need to pause and think carefully about how to take the next steps, cautiously and safely. I sign the letter. I recommend that you do the same. Thank you very much for watching, and if you enjoy my stuff on this channel, please do consider supporting us and our work through our Patreon community. Thank you.